Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee. I wanted to do a uh, quick video for you guys here uh, this morning. I just got uh, beat up at the dentist office, so uh, trying to get those uh, things done that are important here in uh, the next week or two. But I've had a couple of conversations with people just recently here, and uh, agriculture is the backbone of our local economy here in this part of Michigan. And if something happened or disrupted the agriculture um, for us here, it would be a financial disaster because almost every job around here, whether it's a store or a restaurant or it's places that supply uh, things to the different um, agricultural operations around here, if anything happened to that stuff, it would literally be a collapse in the local economy. And I'm not sure if people know out there where the um, agricultural products that are grown here in America's heartland, where they end up. And uh, most items that are grown here, soybeans, corn, wheat, a lot of that stuff is for export. And uh, <clears throat> and that throws another monkey wrench into uh, the economy. If something would happen on the other side of the world, something with uh, you know China on the other side of uh, the world, those agricultural exports would basically dry up. They would disappear if some type of hostility broke out, which would cause, you know, it's obviously going to cause some type of uh, collapse with a stock market and the currency and all that other stuff, but it would also collapse agricultural prices because that is what boosts and uh, props up the agricultural prices is uh, the exports. And, uh, Two of our largest places where exports of our agricultural products go is Mexico and Canada. So China, Mexico, and Canada are our big <clears throat> agricultural uh, exporting markets. And, uh, well, Canada <clears throat> is real close, a lot of rail traffic going back and forth. I'm not concerned so much about uh, Canadian exports as I am about Mexico and China. Those are the two that are always in flux. And uh, I don't know if most people know this, but farmers don't always sell their stuff when they harvest it. Sometimes stuff is pre-sold at set prices. Sometimes farmers store their stuff for it to, uh, and then they watch the price. If the price goes up, then they take their stuff to market and sell it. There's actually a lot to the agribusiness uh, portion of uh, agriculture, and I think it's di uh, directly related to prepping. That's why I'm kind of bringing this to you guys. And then the other thing is corn. A lot of corn goes for ethanol production. That ethanol, gasoline that you buy that's like 15 or 20% ethanol, depending on where it is or whatever, that is produced in different ethanol plants around the country, and that is made with corn. <clears throat> So now, if you have some type of uh, disruption with uh, fuel, you have some type of disruption because of some type of hostilities with our, you know, trading partners where that stuff uh, gets ultimately shipped to, you can see where there could be a collapse in agriculture. If something happened to ethanol production for whatever reason, <clears throat> whether it's some type of... Uh, uh, event that would happen like a cyber attack or there would be again some type of hostilities or civil unrest or whatever that's all going to affect agricultural prices it's not just stuff that sits on the store shelf where those agricultural uh, products go so i wanted to do a video and i wanted to talk a little bit of that about you uh to you guys here and uh kind of explain where all this stuff we grow out here in America's heartland, where that goes and that ends up. But anyway, this is Modern Refugee. Just having a little chat with you guys here this morning. I appreciate all my subscribers out there. Hope you guys always get a little something out of my uh, videos. And again, just trying to uh, let you guys know here what goes on in uh, the agricultural communities. Anyway, you guys take care.